Um, okay. I just uh, wanna, before you start, just giving a welcome to everyone. And I, I'm not gonna go too much into the details. Uh, for today, the first session, we are just going to have some of the initiatives uh, that are done on uh, the field of climate change adaptation, disaster risk reduction that are relevant uh, to Maldives. So three presentations are prepared for this session. Uh, one that we're going to have is with Rhymes, the other one uh, from uh, one of the projects that was done uh, for Maldives uh, on uh, basically geodata tools for uh, integral planning uh, on coastal zones. And uh, the last one is a presentation by uh, Dr. Yuji um, Masatomi, head of AP Flat uh, from NIDS. Um, and after that, uh, we're going to be moving to um, a session that is hand-on training uh, for uh, practice on the Risk and Resilient Portal. That session, just to inform the online participants, is only in person. You can also see that in the agenda that was shared uh, this morning. Um, and then we're going to be back uh, after lunch. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, we are going to come back after a tea break for the very first experience, uh, experience sharing session on how Maldives is planning on translating the disaster and climate data into policy and action. Um, and then uh, moving to the next session related to gender mainstreaming in uh, climate change and action. Uh, and after that is going to be la the launch break. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, basically, during the launch break today, again, uh, in an in-person uh, work, we're going to have uh, two uh, booths in the launch area, one of them looking at the collaboration of uh, UNDP Acceleration Lab with the local councils, which later on we're going to have actually a presentation uh, about the topic uh, from the uh, UNDP Acceleration Lab group, uh, and uh, also some introduction uh, related to the geospatial lab uh, that uh, has been established recently by Maldives National University. And we're gonna end the day by one very important session on bringing data into DRR and CCA. Uh, so let's just start with the very first presentation. I think uh, people that were uh, able to come in this rainy, uh, unexpected rainy day uh, are here for now for the morning session. Uh, so please, uh, Mike, go ahead. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Leila. So good morning to our participants in the room, as well as to our um, participants who are joining online. So I am Michael Bausas. I am a project officer under the Risk Knowledge Applications uh, Department of RIMES, or commonly known as the Regional Integrated uh, Multi-Hazard Early Warning Systems for Africa and Asia. Uh, again, thank you to the organizers for this opportunity to present RIMES work, specifically uh, the platforms uh, for forecasting, as well as the decision support systems that uh, RIMES has developed over the years to support various sectors in impact-based forecasting. So basically, this presentation will focus on these uh, various sections. So I I'll, go, uh, I'll walk you through uh, an overview of the RIMES um, history, our key partners, uh, and its key services uh, that it offers to our member states and collaborating states and other stakeholders. And then we will also provide you with uh, a discussion on the different platforms and decision support systems um, uh, that we have developed over the years. And then again, um, um, some of the ongoing projects and works of RIMES in the pipeline and the specific initiatives and projects are being implemented by, by RIMES with its partners in, in Maldives. Okay, so if, if you may recall, it was in 2004 where a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, one of the largest ever recorded to date, caused a massive tsunami toward unsuspecting shores of Sumatra, Thailand, and 12 other countries around the Indian Ocean, including Maldives. So this has been considered as one of the deadliest tsunami event in recorded history, taking around 230,000 lives. So in Maldives in particular, I think the country, except for the whole country, except for nine um, islands, was affected, destroying hundreds of coastlines in, in Maldives. And uh, the disaster claimed around uh, 100 lives in the country, and with an initial additional 40 lives still missing. 
So Jose Borromeo, uh, Jose Borrero, sorry, uh, a tsunami expert, uh, he reflected that the cause of this massive uh, death and destruction during that time is because of the lack of an official uh, tsunami warning system. So should there be a robust early warning system in place at that time, so then the tsunami impact could have been mitigated and reduced. So this event led actually to the birth of rhymes with the proposal coming from the um, Royal Thai government for the establishment of a tsunami early warning system uh, in a multi-hazard framework for Southeast Asia and Indian Ocean, which was uh, which emanated during the special ASEAN uh, leaders meeting in January of 2005 after the 2004 tsunami. So in April of 2009, with the support from uh, our colleagues from UNSCAP, so RIMES was established and was registered with the United Nations under Article 102 of the UN Charter. Uh, so, so that's starting with uh, our three founding members, including Maldives, uh, Seychelles, and Comoros. So RIMES started its partnership with IRIS, that time um, UNESCO, INCOIS, and UNSCAP to support in the development of earthquake alerts, tsunami bulletin, and three-day weather forecast. So later on, uh, the organization's partnership expand to include uh, other organizations and other agencies, including ECMWF, the World Meteorological Org Organization, USAID, among others. So RIME services has also evolved from the mere three-day uh, forecast to 10-day forecast and seasonal forecasting, especially with the support from our colleagues from ECMWF. And uh, of course, we have developed over the years various forecasting uh, platforms for hydromet services, as well as decision support tools for the various um, climate sensitive sectors. And um, the capacities on multi-hazard uh, early warning systems of our member states were also improved through the various projects that uh, we have implemented through our uh, various donors and key partners, including again, UNESCO, USAID, um, FAO, uh, World Bank, GCF, et cetera. So currently, um, RIMES has 22 member states and 27 collaborating countries. So RIMES actually evolved along with the constantly um, evolving needs and the requirements of its member and collaborating states. So here's just an overview of uh, the core services that is being provided by RIMES. So first, we support the member states in terms of enhancing uh, monitoring stations and, of course, the data management systems to ensure data availability and address gaps in multi-hazard early warning information. Second, uh, we also foster cooperation at various levels for data sharing to increase to improve accuracy and lead time of forecast. So model development and forecast generation is integrated through RIME's um, suite of user-tailored tools and dynamic web portals to enhance users' capacities to access, uh, customize, and apply forecast services. So some of these tools that I'm uh, saying, uh, we will tackle this later on in this uh, presentation. So RIMES also facilitates a co-production approach in the design and development of uh, decision support systems to transform data into actionable information. So this is all for managing resources, uh, for mitigating risks, and supporting risk-informed decision-making in various uh, climate-sensitive sectors, including agriculture, water resources, DRM, among others. And also RIMES uh, facilitates mecha mechanisms for empowering local um, institutions and communities through actionable risk information and uh, the promotion of forecast-based action through its projects and initiatives, such as, for example, the Strengthening uh, Last Mile Communication Project, which we are implementing in the South Asian region. And then RIMES uh, adopts a unified user-centric approach that combines the overall enhancement of the national institutional framework with robust uh, context-driven last mile communication and feedback mechanisms. And lastly, so over the last decade, RIMES has made considerable progress in the region in establishing end-to-end -end early warning systems uh, through uh, institutional capacity building and research and development. So this includes the establishment of a regional tsunami uh, watch providers, national tsunami warning centers that supports the national uh, hydrological and meteorolo meteorological services and other institutional mechanisms for warning dissemination and community preparedness. Okay, so this, this exceeding slides uh, will present some of our um, regional platforms for data sharing and for customizing forecast products. So first up is the data um, exchange platform, which is a meteorological uh, data exchange visualization and analytics system. So uh, this tool, these are used by NMHS to, to upload observation data, as well as download um, ECMWF models, such as the um, high resolution 10-day forecast, or HRES, 
um, um, uh, ensemble 15 day of uh, atmospheric model ensemble 15 day forecast as well as um, seasonal seven month uh, forecast. Uh, this tool can also be used to download, say, forecast graphs and animations as well as do forecast analysis. So this data sharing arrangement was made under the collaborative framework between RIMES and the ACMWF, and at least uh, around 37 RIMES member countries uh, agreed to share real-time and historical uh, meteor meteorological and hydrological data to improve performance of climate model outputs by ECMWF and thereby enable uh, the provision of high-resolution forecast products to the participating countries. Uh, the data uh, being shared by NMHS in exchange of ECMWF data, you can see in your screen here. Okay. So the next tool is the focus tool or the um, forecast uh, customization system. So this is designed to provide actually monthly or seasonal weather forecast by using uh, multi-model ensembles of climate model data sets. So actually there are two um, forecast methods that can be used in the focus tool. First is the simple mean method and the weighted average method. So with these tools, actually users uh, with access to the system can process the data in a shorter periods and it, it can be uh, uh, the, the respective data can be plot in dynamic response. So the focus system currently has 10 uh, global uh, climate models that you can see in your screen with two observation data sets uh, uh, it can, it can produce actually probabilistic forecast for analysis. By the way, uh, I'm also currently in the room. I'm also with uh, Mr. GQ. Uh, so he he actually uh, developed this this focus tool. So if you have uh, questions later on about this tool, he's uh, here to to provide your response also. So the next tool will be the climate data access and analysis system or the CDAS. So this is a web-based uh, por portal for accessing and analyzing various um, uh, global climate models, gridded observation data sets, and downscaled regional climate model products. And it also is used for visualizing analysis results. So currently, CDAS uh, contains data sets from eight global climate models, six models from um, NASA Earth Exchange, and uh, six regional climate models uh, of the uh, Cordex South Asia. So CDAS also includes two future uh, emission scenarios, um, uh, RCP 4.5 and RCP 8.5. So each model spans uh, the period 1980 to 2005, representing a baseline period and future projections for the period until uh, 2100. So that's 2100. So this data sets um, enable uh, telescopic downscaling of climate baseline and projections from coarse resolution global climate models of say 180 kilometers resolution uh, to downscaled information of up to around 25 kilometers. So from multiple climate models enabling development of robust um, climate change projections, of course, with uncertainty levels. So CDAS has also the capability to extract smaller subsets of data from large uh, climate model data sets archived in the backend server through easy graphical interface. So the climate data analysis engine is capable of a variety of climatological analysis, including analysis of extremes. Okay, so RIMES also has several internally developed uh, decision support uh, systems for sectoral use. So examples are shown in your screen. So we have the SESAME, or the Specialized Expert System for Agrometeorology -meteorolo Early Warning. Uh, so this is uh, a DSS for the agriculture sector. So this optimizes weather uh, data to um, identify specific crop management practices, such for example, um, to know when to apply irrigation or fertilizer, uh, when to expect the occurrence of crop pests and diseases. And it also provides forecasts and alerts on droughts and other extreme weather events that are uh, relevant uh, to our uh, farmers. So basically, we, we did a uh, comprehensive customization of this tool for five countries under um, our SCAP project, uh, Enhancing Weather and Climate Resilience. Uh, it drives member states through capacity building on impact forecasting. So RIMES also developed um, OSFAS the Ocean State Forecasting and Advisory System. Uh, this tool uh, provides data on sea conditions and ocean waves and swells based on weather forecast to guide the marine sectors, uh, fisher folks, and the shipping lines. 
So a number of DSS also for disaster risk management have been developed, such as the Flowcast um, or the Flood Cautioning Alert System that provides uh, 15 days to 72 hours lead time flood forecast. And then we also have the SMART uh, tool, which is the System for Multi-Hazard Potential Impact Assessment um, Alert Emergency Response Planning and Tracking. So this is like a one-stop uh, shop for different hazards like road accidents, um, earthquakes, heat waves, and many other hazards for assessing the potential impacts uh, to prepare operational users and also to guide in uh, policy making. So in terms of uh, the future developments uh, that we are currently working on, so RIMES uh, first will expand its servers and the data exchange platform into a cloud infrastructure linked uh, with uh, external cloud computing systems such as the European Weather Cloud. So the regional setup shall be used to run high resolution numerical weather predictions for um, specific applications. So the cloud server is um, envisioned to be uh, in this structure. So RIMES Hydromet Cloud shall be used uh, say, to store um, and process historical observation data models, um, NMHS systems and tools and forecast products. And then the RIMES uh, sectoral cloud shall be upgraded to store and process historical impact data, um, exposure and vulnerability information that uh, are coming from the different sectors. And uh, host also sectoral decision support systems and tools for impact-based forecasting and scenario analysis and for the issuance of response advisories among others and also uh, we will uh, we are committed to sustain also and upgrade the uh, the different dsss that have been developed over the years by rhymes and um, some of the new dsss that we are planning to uh, uh, develop within the year until next year uh, includes uh, DSS, air, DSS for sectors of uh, transportation, tourism, energy, and also uh, aviation. Okay, so this is the high, uh, 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 mock up of the Hydromet workstation and forecaster, uh, sorry, sorry, um, hydrometeorologist, uh, sorry. Where's that? <laughs> Okay, so this is a map up of the hydrometeorologist and operational forecaster that Rahims is currently working on. So basically, the hydromet agencies will be provided with this uh, forecaster workstation uh, to facilitate the generation of accurate um, weather forecasts, including the formulation of user tailored advisories and alerts and their uh, dissemination. So the for the forecaster workstation will include not only um, the meteorologist uh, visualization, but also analysis module to include for um, aerometeorologists, climatologists, hydrologists, and oceanographers. So RIMES is also establishing a knowledge hub that will uh, document and integrate um, experiences and insights from its programs and projects, um, results from research and development, and guidance from regional global uh, framework and initiatives like, for example, Sendai Framework, uh, Global Framework for Climate Services, and Early Warning for All uh, initiative. Um, this knowledge hub shall also um, house the technical trainings, uh, lessons, and or sessions related, for example, to multi-hazard risk assessment, data management and processing, modeling, uh, impact-based forecasting, early warning, uh, DRR, among others. So this will be open for all our um, uh, member and collaborating states. So this um, platform is initially developed through the, the aid of our uh, friends from SCAP. So in terms of uh, RIMES current works uh, and upcoming initiatives specific to Maldives, so basically uh, the Maldives uh, Meteorological uh, Service, uh, they are using our uh, focus tool with uh, individual and multimodal data in different initial conditions and observational data for calibration and uh, for preparation of skill maps and category uh, probabilities for forecast uh, generation. Uh, also, through the data exchange platform, MMS has able to uh, share historical data from its uh, five synoptic uh, ground observation stations. And for some time, I think they, has, uh, they are able also to download e the various ECMWF data from the system. So, and uh, forecast graphs and animations for their um, forecast comparison and analysis. 
Then we have also developed OSFAS uh, for, for Maldives. So this is for the uh, forecasting marine and ocean conditions. But uh, I think this has to be updated so that it could be uh, generate more uh, accurate alerts and warnings. So on the projects or initiatives, we also uh, recently implemented the project um, from uh, funded by ESCAP, which is the Enhancing Weather and Climate Resilience in RIMES Member States through capacity building on impact-based forecasting. So under the project, uh, we have conducted a series of trainings for uh, MMMS and um, other NMHS and sectoral representative, representatives of project countries, focusing on topics such as um, impact-based forecasting and risk analysis, weather forecasting, um, seasonal and climate prediction, and hydrological modeling and flood forecasting. So the project also provided technical and financial support in the conduct of the last two Maldives National Monsoon Forums, which have been um, a significant venue for NMHS uh, to uh, collaboratively partner with the sectoral stakeholders in terms of uh, delivering seasonal forecasts as well as informulating um, seasonal preparedness strategies and plans. So currently, uh, RIMES also implements a USAID uh, project through uh, UCAR, which is entitled the Strengthening Last Mile Communication in South Asia Region. So specifically, this project aims to contribute to climate resilience through the enhanced um, access and use of early warning information among last mile uh, users. So the project initially covers uh, four South Asian countries, including Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. And we are planning to expand the project activities also to, to Maldives. So we are working on the proposed expansion of the project activities, uh, and we hope to seek the approval from USAID within maybe the second quarter of 2024. So RIMES will also support the implementation of the SOF uh, program in, in Maldives. So this aims to set up and or um, update the synoptic ground observation network in the country and sustain its compliance with G1 requirements and standards. So specific to the uh, support of RIMES in the National uh, Monsoon Forum, so in Maldives, uh, we support MMMS in terms of uh, providing expert advice and technical support, and of course, the use of weather, uh, climate information, and risk and resource management, uh, among others. So aside from the national uh, forums, RIMES also provides support to regional uh, climate outlook forum in South Asia and in other regions such as in Southeast Asia. So this is my last slide. So actually, the conducted a series of IBF trainings that I have mentioned earlier under the SCAP project uh, were found useful in the conduct of risk analysis and development of uh, customized IBF system for the different sectors. So the on the other hand, the NMHS dedicated trainings on weather, seasonal, and climate prediction, uh, and hydrological modeling and flood forecasting. This has um, introduced updated and new models that are very useful, I think, in, in forecast generation. And say, for instance, the MMS were able to use uh, the, fo the focus tool that uh, we have developed to, to generate customized seasonal forecasts, as, as I have uh, discussed earlier. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our works. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any question in the room? Or online for mine? I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, am I audible? It's, uh, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so uh, when you showed your slide, uh, where you showed that the, uh, the one model that RIPES has, has can give access to the global climate models, uh, NASA, is it possible to go back to the slide and then? Sure, sure. Is it this slide yeah. or the other one? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So is it for global data or uh, country-specific data uh, that is accessible through this uh, portal? Uh, actually, this is based on uh, global climate models. So the data sets are basically coming from global data sets. And um, through this um, um, platform, you can actually select the specific region, and then you can run 
the 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 the, the uh, platform to to produce this kinds of um, analysis. So the, I, this, I, I guess this is like a climate projection from 2024 to 2064. And also, I think I, I have here also Jay. Perhaps he can also provide some inputs on about this data sets that we are using for these systems. Yeah, I was wondering because uh, this, this uh, data sets, uh, they have selected climate models, right? As, I, as far as I remember, you mentioned eight, eight models. Eight global climate models? Yes. Yeah, so uh, is there any uh, specific guideline in the, uh, in the portal uh, for the countries to choose the climate models from the data sets, uh, what is available, based on the, you know, uh, country specific uh, weather or climate pattern? Uh, because uh, many countries might not need all the climate models to work on. Uh, there might be some of the models which are very uh, applicable to country specific weather or climatic pattern. Is there any guideline or uh, they have to be, I mean, all the climate models have to be chosen or, or is there any kind of you know, uh, guideline or? Yes, yes. Actually, actually, when you logged in and registered into the system, you can actually select the model that you think uh, most suitable for, for your condition. So as you can see here in this um, screen, uh, if you select, for example, sorry. No, no, there was no question. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can actually select um, the the specific model, and then you can run the system to to pro to produce the uh, data analysis uh, maps. Is there any guideline to choose the models? Because we might not know which model work based for my country. Uh, is there any guideline that you know to show you that okay, by this country, these are the uh, potential models that can be used for uh, to view the future climate scenario? Okay. Um, I I'd like also to request inputs from GQ. Um, the developers of, of these uh, platforms, but I, I think currently they cannot unmute their microphones. If I can request also Leila to provide access to GQ. Uh, unmute them. <laughs> Uh, okay. okay, I think we can go ahead. Yeah, Yiki, can you try to, to speak? Sorry. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now, Yiki. Hello. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, actually, the CDAS CMIP5 model, so uh, uh, for the, the selected models. So, uh, but in another tools like Focus, we have a model verification function there. So, um, we can use another tools to verify to then come back to another tools to like CDAS or others to select the model which are good for multiple domain to see the like uh, projections. So is it the question about like? So there should be, there are other tools that uh, RIMES has that basically complement this and help verify what is the suitable model. Is that the correct? Summary. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, the initial uh, design of the CDAS, we did not consider about this function because uh, we only provide the data sets and the simple analysis in this platform. So basically, the, the model verification, you have to do it offline. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Answer the question. Any, any other questions yeah. here or online? Okay, I don't see any questions. We're going to have a little bit of time at the end of the session as well. If anything comes, um, then we can answer that. So may I ask uh, Dr. Frederick to share his presentation? Thank you.
Yes, sure. Um, thanks. Good morning. Um, let me just pull up my presentation then. Sure. Uh, Mike, I think your presentation is still on. So if you can stop the share. Thank you. So, yeah, I believe you can now see my presentation, correct? Yes, yes, we can. Format. Okay, so here we are. Okay, well, thanks for uh, inviting me. So my name is uh, Frederick Rudhoff. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, an initiative that uh, we did on behalf of the Netherlands government um, about two years ago, or actually a year and a half ago. Um, and yeah, so an, it's basically an overview of that activity. Uh, we are now from the Dutch government still looking at follow up to this activity. So I think the timing is actually quite good to present some of the results from back then uh, right here and uh, see if there's also possibilities to align with some of the activities that have been shown from other programs and projects um, yesterday and today and also tomorrow. I, I also uh, connected yesterday for some uh, for some of the presentations and I saw some uh, some interesting initiatives that uh, align quite well with also what we were planning to do. So uh, um, yeah, this is the first slide. You see some pictures uh, of me actually walking here with the, the base. Uh, Dr. Frederick, your voice is breaking. Um, she's an expert on. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'll try to get the microphone a little bit closer. Is this better now? Uh, yes, and I disconnected camera just to give a little bit more bandwidth for the voice and the slides. Disconnect the camera. Is that better? I think it might help. <laughs> Okay, I will try to speak a bit slower then. Um, so yeah, let me go on to the explaining what our initiative was about. So I was the team leader of what we call the Dutch Risk Reduction Team. Uh, it's a facility that was set up in the Netherlands to um, basically support countries all around the world with mostly water related threats or, or uh, disasters. Uh, on this map, you see where mobilizations have taken place uh, throughout the years. And then, yeah, also uh, the Maldives um, send a request for support. And we, we came out and uh, did this initial assessment. Um, so why do we do this from the Netherlands? Well, as you can see here on the left, there's a map of our country and uh, a large part of it is below sea level. So we have a a long history of uh, living with water and finding solutions um, yeah, to, uh, yeah, to create sustainable futures for our country. And um, well, we like to share that information, but also when we go out um, to other places around the world, we learn, of course, from issues and from approaches um, that we can then also apply in our own country. So it's really a two way street. So that about a little bit about the background. And then, um, well, of course, we don't just go out and, and help um, randomly, but it's usually on the basis of a request. And a request came in from the Maldives, from the Minister of State, uh, Dr. Abdullah Nasir, from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, if I say it correctly. And the specific request um, was to give support uh, uh, in, in in GIS type technologies, spatial planning, um, in the context of disaster management support. Uh, on the one hand, maybe focusing on, let's say, early warning type uh, applications, but also particularly um, in the analyzing uh, and mapping of physical processes in connection to projects, uh, land reclamation uh, specifically. So I do have a little video giving a brief overview of those uh, of, of of our visit to the Maldives. I'm going to try to start it. I hope it works out. 
maybe for some of you in the room, you will see some familiar faces in this video. So let's see if this works. I'm sorry, if you're speaking, you cannot hear anything. Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, we couldn't hear. Uh, I, I can see the slide of Mother City, but are you speaking? No, at the moment there was sound to the video, but I guess the, that sound oh. doesn't come through. Yeah, yeah. So if you, uh, when you're sharing, uh, below it should be able the audio. You have to click on that if you want to show that. Sorry, I'm not so sure what you just said. Did the video come through or not? We can see the video without any sound. Oh, okay, okay, all right. And I will just uh, speak a little bit while the video is playing. Okay, so we visited <clears throat> uh, two, or actually three islands next to Malé de Fuji and uh, also Mafushi. Uh, we looked at the specific coastal erosion problems that were um, present in those islands and also in the well basically the workflows at the government uh, how to assess and monitor these projects so of course yeah these are images from the field visits and also we completed our visit with uh, a training um, at the ministry uh, of, uh, of, uh, of environment and I think we have a picture now coming up soon with some of the participants. Yeah, these are some images from the training. And as I said, we are now looking at a follow up to this initial initiative that we did a year and a half ago. Okay, I think the video now finishes and sorry about that. The sound didn't come through. So, but I can share the video uh, through a link also if people still want to watch it with sound. But let me continue from here. Okay, so um, really the core of our training was making use of this uh, online platform called uh, Google Earth Engine. Uh, maybe uh, some of you are familiar with it and basically. Uh, yeah, it's a. It's an online platform huh, with uh, a freely available catalog of geospatial data sets. Uh, the, the computing uh, takes place uh, in the cloud. And really what the training was about is to introduce the participants uh, in the way of making scripts and procedures around this online database. So to basically make those type of scripts and procedures yourself. Uh, um, the, the idea really is to, to, to offer something that can help local workflows and local procedures and not so much uh, set up something and then deliver the, the final project with its functions uh, as they are, but really give flexibility to the users. And just to give a bit of an overview of the possibilities, you can analyze satellite images and, for example, extract island dynamics, and there's also data sets showing the bathymetry, so you can also uh, have a bit more uh, insight on what's happening underwater and monitor those impacts. There's weather data there, also forecasts uh, from global data, uh, from global uh, weather models, uh, making, including predictions up to, I believe, 10 days ahead. So we're really talking about weather forecasts here, not so, not only climate forecasts. And that, of course, could be useful in the context of early warning technologies. Um, there is. Uh, uh, flood monitoring, so there's also some layers that uh, that detect past um, uh, wetted areas. Uh, you can do analysis like these. Um, 
map out flood frequencies. And you could even then also translate that to impact um, yeah, almost on a on a building uh, going down to the building level and seeing how individual buildings and streets and infrastructures could be affected under different scenarios. OK. Now this can of course support land reclamation, but what you can also do is analyze uh, past natural processes, for example, as here for uh, Fahala Island, where you could even see the natural resilience uh, after a tsunami event that occurred in uh, 2004. Uh, you see here how part of this island was washed away and then over the years restored naturally by the natural um, marine dynamics. And of course, this type of insights can be very helpful also for the definition of future projects. And I just want to briefly give an example of how these kind of natural processes have been used in the Netherlands at a land reclamation project. You see some images here where, well, a land reclamation was built, but in such a way to work in harmony with the, uh, with the natural processes. So extract sediments from the waters and thereby um, yeah, improve also uh, habitats for uh, different types of species. Now, many times in uh, in the Maldives, the land reclamation projects have a, primarily a different purpose, uh, creating land for um, uh, for urbanization uh, mostly. Uh, but also there, it's important to consider the natural processes, uh, and not only in the immediate surroundings of the uh, of the projects, but also in the context of the interactions between different islands, and make sure that these projects are yeah, occurring in harmony and are carried out sustainably. Huh? Um, because of course, next to creating land, um, there are other potential benefits, but maybe also trade-offs to consider. And it would make sense to also include those in the cost benefit of various projects. And consider, for example, also the protection from the sea that is gained or lost and impacts on biodiversity or maybe even yeah, um, opportunities uh, for tourism. Now, if you look at the past, um, many times the, uh, the blueprint, if you will, for land reclamation followed the example of what was done to, to Male. Uh, so here you see an old map from about 100 years ago and the way that Male looks today. Now, this is usually the approach for land reclamations also in other islands, as you can see here at uh, Edafushi Island. And um, from these past examples, of course, we can learn also in the context of um, yeah, biodiversity and the protection from the sea. Uh, you can see in these examples, the outer reef is completely filled up and thereby you lose, of course, some of the natural uh, protection that the uh, that the islands have in their more natural state. So that is really something to consider uh, in these type of projects. OK, so this brings me already to the last slide. I know I flew through it quite quickly. Uh, there's much more I could say about it, but I will try to limit it to a relatively short presentation. Um, so the takeaways here are of course, it is important to continue training in GIS analysis and mapping and really give the user the tools to set up scripts and methods that help their particular workflows uh, and procedures. Um, for one, to plan and assess projects, but also these type of tools can be used to really make early warning type technologies um, that can operate on a weather forecasting uh, scale. Uh, so really talking about what's happening in the next couple of days and which assets uh, could be affected. Uh, so that's the, the, the objective here in our collaboration. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, we hope that we could somehow connect with other initiatives that are out there. And particularly a final message that I want to give is that in these workflows, it really makes sense to increase the attention to system behavior and sustainability. Huh? Um, you should not really only look at the projects themselves, but consider interactions at various spatial scales, use the opportunities with to work with nature uh, to assure that also projects are carried out in a sustainable way.
So I'm going to finish right here. I think now comes my last slide. Yeah, this is my picture, my contact details. So besides uh, doing these type of assignments for the Dutch government, I'm also an associate professor at the Water Institute or at the, at the Institute for Water Education in the Netherlands. And we also have possibilities to set up capacity building projects. So here are my contact details if you have any interest in discussing follow up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Frederick. I think uh, at least in some of the fronts, uh, especially when it comes to uh, land use uh, details for the Maldives, using the Google Alert data for updating uh, the land use land cover, and also a lot of the predictions, uh, kind of our uh, result and the uh, work of the project answer to a lot of the questions and gaps that were mentioned in your presentation. So that's uh, good to know, at least uh, in that uh, front, uh, we have a lot that can kind of complement each other. Um, are there any questions? Uh, for your... Yeah, so it's really interesting. And uh, the most interesting part what uh, I, I uh, saw is the uh, when you mentioned about national resiliency. And uh, uh, you uh, recommended that land reclamation in harmony with na uh, natural processes. So, do you have any specific uh, example? You have already shown one example, and do you have any specific example where there has been a land reclamation from from all these, and you recommend some kind of you know um, uh, resiliency measures uh, which are in harmony with the nature? Uh, do you have any, any specific examples or a recommendation for a specific island or specific area? Um, well, thank you for that question. Um, of course, we had we did look around the the various land reclamation projects that have been carried out uh, in the Maldives uh, over the past decades, let's say, and uh, you see several examples, let's say, along the Malik. Uh, approach, uh, also the one that I showed in this presentation, but there have also been some perhaps more innovative approaches, and some of these you could even also see at uh, some of the, the island resorts, uh, where on a even smaller scale um, land reclamations uh, are taking place, and sometimes they follow a more natural shape uh, and not follow, uh, and not filling up the entire outer reef. So there are, of course, various uh, approaches that that have been tried in the in the Maldives, and um, well, we didn't analyze them uh, in detail, but it would make sense to to learn from these. And um, also, some of the the two islands that we visited, uh, I think it was uh, at the Fushi Islands. They're they're making this. Uh, um, yeah, this 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 a little uh, uh, or a smaller island next to the the main island, and they connected the main island with a bridge to also keep intact the natural dynamics of the water uh, in the inner reef. So these are of course, um, yeah, very good approaches to follow. But I, I have to admit we didn't study the um, the detailed dynamics there and see if it was really done in a most optimal way. But there are different approaches that have been tried and it would make sense to learn from these. Thank you so much. I hope much. that answers your uh, question. Yes, yes, yes. Any other questions from this room? So we have the contact information of Dr. Frederick as well for those who might want to uh, follow up with uh, the information you provided uh, later on. Uh, so at this point, I would ask uh, Dr. Uh, Yuji uh, Mosatomi to join us here.